before I learned. Hi, and welcome to the Thanksgiving edition of The Grid. I'm Mike Foreman. I'm joined by Ray Castillo and Marcus Gutierrez as we're going to talk about our playoff games this week. Uh, we have a bunch of them still. We actually have 20 games this weekend, 19 on Friday and one on Saturday. Uh, our area teams did quite well in the first round. In fact, only two were eliminated out of all the teams we had. One of them, in fact, was a game between two area teams. So the first round went very well for the area teams. And we'll, we'll start right out with uh, Victoria West, Marcus. Uh, you didn't get to cover it. Ray can talk a little bit about it if he wants. But uh, they opened up with a win over San Antonio Memorial. Uh, but the task gets quite a bit tougher this week uh -huh. as they face a perennial playoff team in uh, Kerrville Tyvee. They'll be playing up at uh, Bastrop Memorial Stadium. Yeah, it's a big win uh, for the Warriors. Um, first win under a uh, playoff win for head coach Courtney Boyce, which is good. Um, uh, we got Ray will talk about the game in a little bit, but you talk about a Tyvee program that has always been great. Mm -hmm. And, you know, West, West was once one of those teams that was was a good great program and you know they've had a little scuffle now with the talent that's left but these these young warriors look great you know Keon Boyd stepped up great you know they have a great sec secondary in Hagen McClarity and Bryce Sitka there's a lot of this youth that's uh it's getting better and it's only going to get better over time but you go against a tough team like Tyvee um they're going to have their chance they're going to have their battles but um we saw last week Chase Grevy back at the running back position with uh Tyvon Hardrick out um, so that was good to see. And Keon Boyd throwing the ball, I think that was a, a big, big deal. This is the playoffs. You're going to need those big-time plays because those are momentum changers, and those, those can change a game at any, any part. So uh, it's going to be a tough test. I talked to uh, Coach Boyce today. He uh, said that they're a great team. They're gonna, West is going to have to play their, their best game of the season yet again. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see, um, you know, going against uh, that high-powered offense that they have. I think they have about three or four receivers over – about 400 or 500 yards. So um, the last time they saw that was against Alamo Heights. They hung in there with Alamo Heights, but um, they have some experience going through like an air raid team. So it'll be a challenge to the playoffs. We'll, we'll find out Friday what happens. Yeah. Well, what did you see, Ray, that maybe uh, stood out to you about West yeah. last week? Yeah, their defense in the second half was, was phenomenal. You look at them shutting out Memorial. That was really impressive to see. And you, like Marcus said, Chase Creevy had a great game with the four touchdowns. You know, got in the end zone when he needed to. And Keon Boyd made passes and made plays. Uh, Brandon Gonzalez, a couple touchdowns. It was nice to see him getting some uh, throws to at the, the receiver end and, you know, making that huge touchdown, which shifted the momentum as the time expired to end the first half. That was huge for the Warriors. And like uh, Marcus said, they're just looking to carry that momentum into the into the area round against Kerrville Tyvee, which will be the their toughest opponent so far. So it'll be interesting to see what the Warriors can do. Yeah, of course, uh, I think most people will remember uh, Tyvee's uh, one of the one of its most famous alumni, uh, Johnny Manziel, mm -hmm. of course, uh, played at Tyvee before going on to A&M. Uh, actually played against Calhoun, uh, and uh, Coach Whitaker once uh, shared some tape with us of that game. And boy, you could even see at that point how good Manziel was. He made some plays in that game against the Sand Crabs that were pretty incredible. But we'll see uh, what happens if uh, West can uh, play with Tybee and uh, have a chance to move on another round. Um, usually the second round, the matchups get better, but you don't always have a big-time game. Well, we actually have two that we expect to be very big-time, one that Ray will be covering uh, two of our best area teams in Goliad and Hallettsville are going to meet in Edna. You know, let me say that again. Not Victoria, but Edna. And I'm not going to make any editorial comments about that, but we'll just leave that right there. Mm -hmm. But uh, this should be a great matchup. Yeah. Two really good teams. Yeah, two great teams coming at it. Both of them 9-1, and one, both of them on the season. So equally matched. And, uh, you know, you pointed at this out to me earlier, Mike. Uh, first time the teams are meeting since 2015 when they used to be district rivals. Right. So this is their 18th meeting overall, and it's going to be a good one to watch. You know, Coach Nicholson was saying the guys are ready. They're hoping they can just carry their early su success. And, you know, both programs are well coached. And, you know, yeah. Penn 6 said the same thing about Go Goliad. It's just uh, mutual when it comes to respect. 
And, uh, you know, you look at the key players, you know, they're going to be ready. DJ Taylor, you know, senior quarterback for Hallettsville, he wants to leave it all on the field, he said, with it. He doesn't want it to be his last game. You know, and the same thing for Goliad, whether it's, uh, you know, Trevor Parr, a wide receiver, he wants to go all out as well. And, you know, those guys led by Rocky Morris with Goliad and DJ Taylor, Scooter Adams, you know, you name it, you know, it's all set. And, um, you know, this game should, you know, live up to everything that we're hoping it's going to be, both teams equally matched and we'll see who comes out on top right it's re- it's an interesting matchup because uh, both teams have the ability to throw and run they're not mm-hmm. one-dimensional now of course Goliad you have the power running game with Logan Bland mm-hmm. and uh, of course Hallettsville has the uh, wide receivers of mm-hmm. course in Jordan Brooks and then uh, Jackson Taylor so you've got some different variations here uh, I think it's just going to be uh what team can match up against those people better, I guess? Yeah, I covered Hallettsville last week, and um, they, they struggled to start the game. It was just surprising. Um, but one thing that stood out was their defense. Their defense held them, mm-hmm. held Luling, the three and outs, three consecutive three and outs, and then um, the offense started clicking. They only had 14 points in the in the first half of that second half. They broke they broke open, and um, D.J. Taylor had, had a game, four touchdowns, a pick six. Um, even scored uh, yeah. a long, long rushing touchdown. So the, but the main thing from that game was that defense. And when it comes to the playoffs, mm-hmm. the defense is going to be key. Um, you know, uh, for Goliath, Goliath was the same thing against Santa Rosa. They started off a little slow, and then they came and just blew them out. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, you're going to want – both teams are going to have to come out uh, fast and strong. And the team that does that, maybe they might pull this one out. Right. And defensively, you look, of course, you have linebacker Jackson Reed for mm-hmm. Hallettsville and, of course, Angel Hernandez for Goliad. Mm-hmm. So you have exceptional players on both sides. And really, uh, this will be a, a, this really shouldn't be a second round matchup, mm-hmm. but it is. That's just the way the bracket mm-hmm. falls. Uh, whoever goes on from here, you know, you don't like to look too far ahead, but, you know, you're you're expecting them to go to the quarterfinals mm-hmm. against what you would think would be Yoakum. Yeah. So uh, that'll be, uh, this should be a very interesting game on Friday night. The other matchup that seems to always happen almost is Shiner and Mason. Mm-hmm. Uh, these two teams have met, I think uh, this is the seventh time in the last eight years that they've met in the playoffs. And I think this is the fifth time that they met in the area around now. That, that's a shame, really, for two good teams to mm-hmm. play so early. But like we said, you know, you don't control the bracket. Uh, Marcus, you went last year. Uh, Mason, you know, jumped to a big lead. Shiner caught him and forced overtime, and then Mason was able to win it. Yeah, that, that was a really strange game. We know at halftime I was like, oh, I don't think they're going to be able to come back. But um, you can never doubt the Shiner and Coach Stephen mm-hmm. Turney. They fought back and went to overtime, and they had a chance to win it. Um, the first time the overtime play, uh, uh, overtime it was it was over with. But you cannot stop Shiner. I mean, it's just there's just something about them that they're always going to be in that game. Mm-hmm. And so you know they uh, they lost to Refugio, but maybe we don't know if, if Mason is on Refugio's level. But um, you know Mason they they stopped a lot of people from scoring points. Um, so it's going to be a tough challenge for a Shiner team. You know um, last year you know they had all that senior talent, but this year they're young. But these young kids are really playing good, and it's going to be nothing but uphill from China as long as these kids keep on developing and becoming great players. Right, and I think uh, Coach Cherney said it, you know, playing teams like Hallettsville and Refugio help you because they've seen two, you know, excellent teams. They've had other teams on their schedule that are good as well. Uh, Mason, he said this year that what sets them apart is their quarterback has some experience. He's really good, and they have more quickness than they've had in the past. So, uh that will be the thing that Shiner is uh, going to have to contend with. And uh, really the key for Shiner, as always, is uh, to be physical. Mm-hmm. You know, control the ball, move the ball with their VR offense, and, and, you know, make first downs, keep their defense off the field. And uh, really that, that's the key for them. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, those are two of the highlight matches. But there, there are other big games around the area. Of course, we have an actual uh, afternoon game on Friday. Refugio will be playing in the afternoon. Uh, the uh, Bobcats will play Thorndale. Um, that'll be up at Judson. Uh, this will be a chance, you know, they, they had no problem, you know, in their by district game against uh, Ben Bolt. In fact, a running clock from the third quarter on. And uh, 
of course, the big news coming out of that was the return of uh, Casey Henderson came back and rejoined his teammates, and that uh-huh. that was incredible. I mean, to see him get up out of that chair and walk onto the field and then walk out by himself for that coin toss was mm-hmm. was just amazing. It, it it was it was incredible, and and I think if if even the the players admitted that. It was hard for them to focus in the first half because of that. They were, you know, in, what can you expect? But the second half, they got down to business and they took care of things. And we'll see if they carry that over. And there's some other games in San Antonio. We have Yoakum, which you saw last week. Uh, Yoakum will be playing again against George West. And this is an interesting matchup because uh, George West coach Brent Cornegay was the coach at Yoakum before Bo took over. Uh, Brent left to go home to George West. That's, his, I believe, either his or his wife's hometown. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he went back home, and now uh, Bo took over. So Brent knows all those kids, mm-hmm. all those players. He coached them all. So uh, it's going to be, it should be interesting. Yeah, Yoakum took care of business against Randolph, 55 to 8, and... Um Everything was clicking for them. Josh Moore, Jordan Moore, mm-hmm. um, Holden Lauer, and Haken Garvin made plays. And uh, that defense is really, really uh, surprised me. We always talk, you always hear coaches say, fly to the football. Yeah. Well, the Bulldogs, they were literally flying to the football, and you could hear the pop on the pads and everything. They were very physical. Um, they took Everybody got to play, even the freshmen in the JV. So um, uh, talking with Bo Robinson afterwards, you know, he said, we took care of bases, now we're on to the next one. So the Bulldogs, it's all about the business. And, uh, you know, I got to see George West earlier uh, in the mm-hmm. year when they played Goliad. Uh, they have a solid run game. Um, they have the ability to throw the ball, too. So um, uh, the secondary is going to have – the Yoakum's going to have – secondary is going to have its challenges. You know, they like to play man a lot. Right. And so it's going to come down to that secondary making plays on the ball. So um, it'll be interesting to see both teams are 10-1. Um, you'll see them uh, – uh, we'll see them uh, in the grid on Sunday. <laughs> and um, I'm sure it's going to be exciting. Yeah, and we also have in the Alamo City, we have uh, Cuero playing Crystal City. Uh, the Gobblers, uh, I mean, boy, they they wasted no time in their bi-district game against West Oso. I mean, they jumped on them. And that game was over almost before it started. Uh, hmm. Gobblers have been very impressive. Uh, uh, Kieran Grant just ran, you know, 225 yards on, you know, very few carries, scored, uh, I believe it was six touchdowns. Great mm-hmm. night for him. I think the Gobblers, you know, they're in pretty good uh, position to move on to as well. And uh, two of the games that are real interesting for me are in Class 4A as well, and that's El Campo and Bay City. El Campo is playing Kilgore, Bay City playing Silsby. Uh, these are East Texas teams. Mm-hmm. And the second round has traditionally proved to be a tough matchup for those teams, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, El Campo and Bay City playing in the same district. And you might, who knows if, you know, this keeps up and they keep on being successful, you might see these two teams meet each other. So it's going to be interesting to go. We we'll definitely keep our eyes out on, you know, the Rice Birds and the Black Hats. And, you know, but t- hats off to those guys. And, you know, Coach Lupe Flores and Wayne Condra, he's really, they've really done a great job this year. Yeah, and it's interesting because all four teams from Bay City's district mm-hmm. and uh, El Campo's district and all four teams from the other district they're playing made it. So that's what you have in this matchup. Mm-hmm. And so theoretically, if one of the other wins out, you could have all the teams left from one district being the last four teams left in a region, which.